No, actually, I was born in uh, Washington, D.C. and grew up in Bethesda. When I went away to college, uh, I was the last child uh, who would cut the grass, so my parents moved to Alexandria to a townhouse where there was no grass. And my dad ran a department store in D.C. and in Arlington called Cannes, uh, K-A-N-N apostrophe S, that was uh, built back in the, uh, during the Civil War. Saul Can, uh, the Saul Can family from Baltimore started the uh, uh, store. There's, um, I mean, I was at w &L. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was looking for jobs. At my age then, uh, the, the draft, they had gone to the number system and I was way high in the numbers. Um, so I could, uh, you know, I, the likelihood of me being drafted was uh, small. I did some interviews and, and nothing interested me. And uh, moving f at w &L from the college to the law school then was, uh, was a very easy thing. I mean, I couldn't get into w &L Law School now. I mean, I was fortunate enough to get in and, and uh, got through uh, and then uh, passed the bar on my side. Um, and then got a job um, as a law clerk for uh, George L. Hart, Jr., who was a U.S. District Judge, judge in Washington, D.C. I got the, his philosophy on law clerks was, I want you to sit in court and watch how people try cases uh, because you know, if you're going to be a lawyer, you need to know the, you know, the good and the bad. I and then I, um, I got with a firm uh, out of, in Alexandria um, and uh, just started practicing law and learning and falling on my face and making mistakes and, um, and uh, had a, I mean, just had a wonderful experience. Well, six years as a substitute judge uh, in both the juvenile and the, the uh, general district court and then 15 years in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court. I retired at 61 uh, because I, I wanted to take the experience that I had from the, uh, the Alexandria Juvenile Court, which was multifaceted. We were a, a model court for the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges um, uh, starting in the mid-90s, and I, I was able to work with really talented people there, uh, as well as uh, judges from Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, um, uh, Buffalo, New York. To, to, out of that, we developed a, our Supreme Court Administrative Office developed a best practice court initiative where uh, I was able to help uh, because of my experience in the model court. Uh, and we, we impacted uh, over half of the child welfare cases in Virginia. Um, you know, and cut, uh, you know, got them to permanency sooner. We did a drug court, one of the first in the country that Judge Dawkins ran that was just fabulous. I mean, it, because what I would get is cases where mom and dad were substance abusers. We didn't have the drug court. I'd order them into drug treatment. They wouldn't go to drug treatment. And a year later, I was terminating parental rights. Um, and so I said, we got to do something different. And so we did the drug court, and we were able to get more kids back home or quick, more quickly or get them to family uh, when we knew mom and dad couldn't make it. Uh, so it was, a, uh, it was really a, a great experience. Oh, uh, well, I, I retired to do consulting work on child welfare around the country. Um, as a result of my experience with the model court, um, Bill Jones, who was a good friend, uh, was a... a a juvenile court judge in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, he was about retiring at the same time, and so he and I uh, connected with the Children's Bureau and the American Bar Association and began doing consulting work for them, helping states to prepare for what are called child and family service reviews, uh, which are federal evaluations of how, how well states are doing their child welfare work. Uh, and so we went out, I went out to, in, in, in a year or two, we went out to, well, all the states. I did 25 states. Went out there, met with the chief justice, met with uh, the head of child welfare, met with the chief judge in the largest jurisdiction that was doing this to tell them that this was all coming, uh, to, to try to get them ready so that they could um, 
do better on uh, these evaluations yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the, the challenge is that if they didn't, the, the, the federal government was going to put financial constraints on them or burdens on them to, to do stuff better uh, or they were going to take money away or sanction them in this way or, or the other. So the court process uh, was an important part of that. Uh, it, we came and visited, and, and, uh, and it's, always, it's always a lovely community. Uh, and so we bought a second home here while I was still doing the, the, you know, the, the heavy travel uh, consulting work. And after about nine months, I just said, I can't do both. And so we sold in Alexandria. What really brought me here was I, during that, those nine months, I, I learned, you know, met some people, learned uh, what was happening here on a limited scale, uh, looked at the school system, saw that there were a lot of challenges there. And uh, as a result of my work in the court system, uh, uh, we had developed a reading program in Alexandria called the Alexandria Tutoring Consortium that helped to, to uh, uh, with kindergartners to get them on grade level uh, by the end of the second grade. I looked at their data, uh, and saw a lot of hidden stuff there that uh, showed me that there were there were real challenges there, and I thought I could come and and uh, uh, because I, I wanted to help uh, and felt that I might be able to uh, do some things or suggest some things that would um, maybe create some change. Every community is is different in its strengths and weaknesses, and uh, and who the leaders are and who's Who's the, who are the change agents, and part of what I had to learn as in my consulting work is uh, I had to, well, I had to learn it as a judge too, but I had to, I had to be a listener, uh, and I had to figure out who, was, who were the people that were going to, you know, were, were going with what we're talking about, and who were the, the ones who were going to re resist so that uh, I could help the, the leaders uh, make the change, because it has to be their idea. A quick story, I'm over in Charlottesville doing a presentation for our best practice court over there after I retire and, and Bobby, my wife, is with me and she's off shopping and she meets a woman and, and tells, you know, they start talking and she says, oh, we're on the eastern shore of Maryland. And a woman goes, oh, does your husband hunt? And she says, no. And well, does he fish? Well, no. Does, well, does he sail? Well, no. She says, what the hell are you doing on the eastern shore of Maryland? I can't help myself. I just, I see government that's not working and and I know it can work better uh, I'm not going to impose that this is how it has to work um, but you know with this uh, the, the Dorchester citizens for better government that we've been trying to get charter you know two charter changes on I mean the the, the, the stuff we're changing is is just it's I mean it's obvious to me yeah. that it will make the government work better uh, than it is, but the resistance is uh, is there. Dorchester County, in this case, was just resistant with the with the city. Uh, I didn't start it. So a group of citizens came to me about the charter change uh, to get a city manager, and I, I mean, my first reaction is, "You all been here? You, know, you deal with it." Uh, and they kept bugging me and bugging me, and so finally I said, all right, suddenly I'm in the leadership of this thing with some other people. <laughs> but we, I mean, we did our homework and we uh, showed the facts and, and, uh, uh, and were able to, to get change that, uh, that we felt was appropriate. I think you can see the benefit of that in, in what has happened to, the, uh, to Cambridge, and the, we did that in uh, that passed in 2015, so it's been, well, two, seven years. Yeah. Mayor Bradshaw, when I was walking our dog on Glenburn, when uh, the, all of the police cars came, um, and I knew, I mean, from my experience, it's just going to be a matter of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I didn't immediately, but I started talking with people about well, this is going to happen. We're going to need a, you know, another mayor. Would you be interested? Would you be willing to serve? And the answer was, I mean, no. Uh, I, I could not find anybody. But I, in talking with uh, uh, Commissioner uh, President uh, Cephas, 
uh, here a couple weeks ago. I mean, she said that uh, being the president and being the commissioner and having a family and having a job uh, was a heavy burden. And so uh, Cambridge is a, is a growing, important city on the, the, uh, uh, you know, on the eastern shore. Uh, it's get, getting more people in. It's getting uh, housing values are rising. We're getting uh, the more development. We're getting more businesses. Um, uh, I, at one point, uh, I would have said, you know, let's just go without. But I think now that we really do need a mayor. Um, and uh, I mean, if you're if you're going to get somebody as one of the five commissioners to be the, the mayor, you really need a vice mayor. I mean, you need to change what it is. And in doing that, what you do is move from a weak mayor form of government to a strong mayor form of government. And I don't know that there has really that that has really been thought through by uh, city council. So there's got to I mean. If it's going to be done, there's got to be a lot of discussion and a lot of, of uh, hard work by everybody and input from the community. Um, and that's what I see the, the, you know, the, the mayor position now is. It's getting out into the community, it's hearing from the community, it's listening to the community, that sort of stuff. I don't see the mayor position as a bully pulpit. I see it as being someone who helps the community to understand what the issues are, helps with the dialogue, but not somebody that is out there saying, you know, you got to do this, or you got to do that, or this is the best way. And, you know, because uh, in my consulting work, uh, it, I mean, I had no power in that community. Right, right. Uh, and yet I was able to help that community to reduce their kids in care to get a, have their system work better because they were engaged in it. I tell you, I mean, I met, I work with communities where uh, it was just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't break through. Um, but when communities got excited, I had to get out of the way. And I see in the same way that, that, that that's what the, the mayor position is, is about. And here, quite frankly, to me, the, the, the absolute critical issues are the, the kids in this community. If, if we don't deal with children's issues, children's education, children's mental health, and, and find a way for this community to, to, to engage and be responsive to and collaborate and work together about those issues, uh, we're going to be grinding away at this uh, forever. Government is not the answer, but engaging the community so that they understand, so that they can say, we need more resources, let's go to, to uh, Annapolis, let's go to Washington, D.C., uh, was, let's find those resources. No. But my skill set, I think, is that as, a, as the mayor, I can at least say, hey, I'd like to be at that meeting. Uh, as a citizen right now, if I said, hey, I want to be at that meeting, they're going to go, why should you be anywhere? Why should you be near us? You know, but uh, as the mayor, because right now uh, we have a county government that is in disarray, uh, that, that has a parks and rec, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't fund itself anything else for kids. Um, we need to find that money. And that money it can be found through the local management board. It can be found, through, you know, but right now the local management board works for the county. It doesn't work for the city. Um, but uh, with moving Dorchester forward that we're, uh, I'm involved with, uh, it can be a, a resource for the city to ask for money. I mean, your federal grants aren't all coming through the county government. It's nonprofits can ask, you know, local governments can ask, you know, Native American institutions can ask. So let's get s started in asking. But I have said I'm doing it for these two years. I want to use this opportunity to, uh, for several reasons. One is to help the community understand 
what a weak mayor form of government is with a, count, with a city manager so that they can see how this, this city will blossom even more in these next two years with Thomas Carroll leading uh, as the city manager and uh, our current city council you know, making the, the decisions. And I think they've been doing a, a very good job. I mean, some decisions I might not have uh, you know, been totally happy about, but overall, uh, I think they've done a, a good job. And, and LeJan with doing uh, the commissioner and being president, I think she's done terrific. Yeah. And what I hope to do is to get the community uh, and some you know, younger people not only engaged in government, you know, volunteering on committees, that sort of thing, but, but uh, 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 helping uh, so that they can be prepared to, to, to run for a, a council position or, or mayor.